Good evening. Welcome to Santa Clarita Christian Fellowship's Wednesday Night Bible Study. Once again, I'm so glad that you joined us. Tonight's lesson is a little different. We're still in our series for Back to Basics. Tonight's lesson will be taught by Deacon Rodney and Sister Sharon Smith. It's entitled Marriage 101. It's an encore presentation they did last year before we were shut down but it's some good truths for marriage. So even if you're not married, not looking to be married, there's something that's gonna be beneficial for you this evening. So stay tuned, God bless you, and we'll see you in a moment. <laughs> so let's break down his needs versus her needs. So the, these are the 10 emotional needs that we just stated a few moments ago. So I was gonna go over them, here we go. Her need. The first thing she can't do without, I think Sharon touched it first, affection. To most women, affection symbolizes security, protection, comfort, and approval. When a husband shows his wife affection, he sends the message, I'll take care of you, and I'll protect you. You are important to me, <laughs> and I don't want anything to happen to you. I will hurt somebody you mess with this one. I, I'm concerned about you, I'm with you, and I'm so proud of you. His need, the first thing he can't do without, remember this is sexual average. fulfillment, <laughs> his, his first need, can't do without. When it comes to sex and affection, you cannot have one without the other. For women, you cannot have one without the other. For men, they just need the sexual fulfillment. The typical wife does not understand her husband's deep need for sex and, and more than the typical husband, any more, excuse me, than the typical husband understands his wife's need for his wife's deep need for affection. An important note here to remember is that affection is the environment of the marriage. It sets the tone for the home, and sex is just a special event. Wait, 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 not just. Just a the sexual. special event. So, of course, that's coming from a woman's perspective. What the men, what the husbands don't get is the tone of the marriage has to be set first. The tone of the home has to be set first. And then <laughs> Absolutely. Right. We she need to give Sister repeat, Charmaine. Repeat that, please. Go ahead, honey. <laughs> she said, let there be a, a sink full of dishes. Well, I wanted her to say it. <laughs> Just the way well, <laughs> Don't have a sink full of dishes and expect me to be loving to you later. And the dishes ain't done. And I got to be the one to do them. Can I get an amen on you, that? <laughs> so that's when you help out with the dishes because you get helped out later. <laughs> okay. uh, she needs him to talk to her. What's that word again? Conversation. There we go. That word again. In the female psyche, conversation blends with affection to help the woman feel united with the other person. She feels bonded to, bonded to that person as long as the affection and conversations continue on a daily basis. And there's another important note, because we need that on a daily basis. Men can, you know, dip in and out a, a few times a week, and, and they're good. Their, their need has been met. But for us, we need to connect on a daily basis. So he needs her to be his playmate. <laughs> Let's go outside and play love. Recreational <laughs> companionship. Men place surprising importance on having their wives as recreational companions. Among the five basic male needs, spending recreational time with his wife is second only to sex for the typical husband. Oh yes, it it can it can be anything actually. Whatever it is he enjoys doing, like Rodney is a sports nut, 
and we've been married for 23 years. He's been trying to get me to engage in football, basketball, anything where people are competing. He wants me involved in that, or he'll want me to go out cycling with him or take a walk with him. It doesn't matter whether I enjoy doing it or not. And prior to us doing dynamic marriage, it's like, well, I don't like doing that. So I'm just not going to do it. But once I learn that it is one of his needs, and if it's that important to him for me to go and ride my bike on the beach with him just to please him, then that's what I'm going to do. Right. It was uh, when we did the love languages last time. Uh, I think I even told her, but that was actually my number one. She's not just the other one that said that sex was their number one, but for me, it was actually recreational uh, companionship. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's on me again. It's on she, ne <laughs> she needs to trust him totally, honestly, and openness. In a sense, a sense of security is the Taj Mahal of a woman's five basic needs. If a husband does not keep up honest and open communication, or oh, I've learned this one. Um, with his wife. He has learned. <laughs> he undermines her trust and eventually destroys her security. The wife who can't trust her husband to give her the information she needs also lacks a means of negotiating with him. A negotiation between a husband and wife forms an essential bonding, essential building block that... Um, for the success of any marriage, otherwise known as a oneness. Now, before I go into his need, I agree with this one to a certain point. As a Christian, what I have learned not to do is to put my trust and confidence in man. And I don't mean just my husband, I mean mankind, period, because the Bible tells us in Proverbs that we are not to put our confidence in man. We're supposed to put our trust and God, I can remember having a conversation with uh, both my daughters a while ago, and we were talking about trust, and they're in, you know, young relationships. And my uh, youngest daughter asked me, so do you trust daddy completely? And I said, no, I do not trust him completely. We're in a fleshly body, but I trust the God that's in him. So, and, and another thing that resonated with me, as a matter of fact, at our dedication service here at the church, when Bishop Hearns was talking about everything he was expecting from his wife, and when God took her from him, he realized that he was putting his wife in a place where only God should be. And, and with Rodney, I mean, we joke a lot, but I, I do. I, I have had this man on a very high pedestal. People have asked me if anything ever happened to Rodney, would you ever marry again? I'm like, absolutely not. His shoes are way too big to fill. So a couple months ago, and I hope you don't mind me being transparent here. I'm not transparent. going to embarrass you. <laughs> he lied to me about something really silly. It was, it, it, it was really, really silly. My keys disappeared. And I looked all over the house for them. And funny enough, when he came home, the keys reappeared and in a he, place that I had already looked. And he tried <laughs> to tell me that he did not put them there. So it would have been funny, but there was a lesson there for me in that because I was so angry. I was livid. I didn't want to talk to him or anything. And I'm like, you would lie to my face. How dare you? I was super dramatic about it. But when Bishop Hearn said what he said, that light bulb went on and it was a lesson to me to let me know that I had had my husband in a place that I should only have God. So back to that point about honesty and openness and trust, I trust God first. I trust God to know how this man should protect my heart. So moving on, his need, he needs a good looking wife an attractive spouse. It sounds a bit immature and superficial, but most men have a need for an attractive wife. They do not appreciate a woman simply for her inner qualities alone. They also appreciate the way she looks. Hold on. I was expecting some comment on this one. <laughs> well, here, <laughs> Sister Charmaine just asked, do we get to have an attractive husband? Why can't so, it be on both our lists? 
here, here is the thing, because this is another conversation <laughs> Rodney and I have had. So uh, we're getting older, you know, we're both people of a particular age, you know, bodies are changing and so on and so forth. So we're talking about exercising together and whatnot. And there's like all this pressure on me, not that he has put on me, but that I have put on myself. So he's talking about, oh, I've gained weight. This doesn't look. And I'm like, honey, you look fine. Ah. And that's what he does every <laughs> time. So I think the way men and women see things are very different. Like I was taught <laughs> growing up, I come from a, a family of predominantly women. And when we were engaged, some of the advice I got is, you don't let your husband leave home with you looking one way and he's out <laughs> working all day around women who have taken the time to get themselves together, to be out in the world and whatnot. And he comes back home and you're still laying around in your pajamas. So as most of you know, I just had a surgery recently. So when Rodney went back to work, even though I'm home recuperating, when it would be within an hour of him coming home from where I'm up, I'm combing my hair, <laughs> I'm changing my clothes, making sure I have lipstick on. So I think it's just the difference between men and women. Like we will find, most women can find a man that has gotten older, lost all their hair, sporting a, you know, salt and pepper goatee, they've gained a little weight and it's like, that brother is fine. You know? Rev, did you just say I'm talking about you? (laughs) (laughs) Afro to no fro. But, but that's oh, the truth. Word. I think men and women are just, we're very different in the way we view attractiveness. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't lose track. Okay. She needs enough money to live comfortably. Financial support. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Yes. <laughs> Most wives do not only want expect their husbands to work, they also expect their husbands to earn enough to support their families. So this is my favorite. This is my favorite. He needs peace and quiet, domestic support. <laughs> domestic bliss is a man's fantasy. It's just a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> This is far, far, far from reality. So the fantasy goes a little like this. (laughs) A home life free of stress and worry. After work, his wife greets him lovingly at the door. His well-behaved children are happy to see him. (laughs) He he enters the comfort of a well-maintained showroom home. His wife urges him to relax and put his feet up before dinner, the aroma of which catches him coming through the door. Dinner conversation is enjoyable and free from conflict. Right. Later, they all take an evening stroll, return home. The children are put to bed without hassle. Then he and his wife relax, talk together, watch a little television, and go to bed to make passionate love all by 9 p.m. <laughs> Just a fantasy. <laughs> Most men will probably be happy with just one of those when they get home. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> he said, "I just take the well-behaved kids." <laughs> Told you, one just they would one, just be happy. Just one. She needs him to be a good father. Family commitment. Above all, wives want their husband to take a leadership role in the family and commit themselves to the moral and educational development of their children. Since a father has a pronoun, pronoun, a profound, profound, excuse me, influence on his children, which is so true. It's one of those things that I had to slow down at one point in my life because I was working so much overtime. I had to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I noticed that um, because I was moving around so much and working so much, 
that, especially when Bria was younger, she said, and she didn't know I was home. She said, well, daddy's not home. He's at work again. And that almost broke my heart right then and there on the spot. I know then I have to make a balance to make sure that I have commitment to my family. And she was only four years old at the time. So for those of you that have young families, you want to be very conscientious of that, that you are checked in to your Always. children's, to the to your children's lives. So um, it was funny because I remember that day like it was yesterday. And the way Bria said it, it was so matter of fact, but even in her being as factual as she was, you could hear the disappointment in her voice, like daddy's never home. He's always at work. So um, our last one is he needs her to be proud of him. And this need is admiration. A man expects and needs his wife to be his most enthusiastic fan. Honest admiration is a great motivator for most men. When a woman tells a man she thinks he's amazing, you're <laughs> thank you thank you love see that was the right way thank you love. okay <laughs> that inspires him to achieve more he will draw confidence from her support and can usually achieve far more with her encouragement so this is an area that i i know to be 100 percent true in our marriage i remember earlier on in our marriage when rodney was just an officer and not to put down officers but that's the grade he was at and we had, Rodney and I have known each other for 30 years. We broke up five years for five years before we got back together. Oh, so when we got back together, I, I said to him, I said, so how long have you been with the city now? And I don't remember what he said at that time. And I said, and you're an officer? And he said, yeah. And I said, it's time for you to be somebody's supervisor. <laughs> You've been there long enough. What's the next step up? I, I like the way you look in your uniform, but the next step up, I like that uniform too. <laughs> so he said, Sergeant. So I encouraged him to apply for Sergeant. He promoted to Sergeant. And just to see the enthusiasm in him and me supporting him in that I was cool with him stopping as Sergeant. He then promoted to Lieutenant. Now he's talking about moving on to Captain. And Thank you. I, I'm like, you're retiring <laughs> in a few years, but it does, it does something for a man when he knows that he has his wife's support and that she is his biggest cheerleader. So these that we just talked about are the 10 basic emotional needs and what we have shared is just a very small caveat under each need. There is actually a whole book on his needs versus his needs versus her needs from dynamic marriage too. from dynamic marriage so the author dr dr harley what's really interesting about his writings is he's a marriage counselor before he wrote this book the majority of his clients the couples that he was counseling they were ending in divorce almost every couple that came to see him, he wasn't getting through to any of them. They were ending in divorce until he wrote this book. So he and his wife have been married for over 50 years now. This book has sold over 1 million copies. 15 years ago, it was in its 21st publication. It, it is a really, really good book. It goes very, very deep. So if any of you are interested in going any deeper, his website is marriagebuilders.com. Rodney and I have been through this whole book. If you want to talk to someone you know that you're comfortable with, see us after. We're happy to share our personal information with you. We can talk it out. That's what we need to start doing. We have to talk things out. We cannot live our lives behind these pretend marriages, behind pretending that everything is okay, you know, with our families. I can remember one time I was new to the church here and I had met another couple and she approached me and she's like, you guys are such an attractive couple and you just look so happy. And I, I stopped and jokingly said, I joke a lot, but 
I'm serious and when I'm joking and, and my face may not always show that I'm joking. And I said, you know, my husband could have just whooped me up one side of the house and down the other. <laughs> Don't let the have. smooth taste fool you. We, we cannot, you know, look at people and judge them based on appearances. We've got to stop doing that. We have to get to a place where we have our village that we trust, that we can talk things out with, people that have walked the walk that you're walking right now. Wisdom is a blessing. I remember my grandfather used to say, Sharon, do you wanna be smart or do you wanna be wise? And I was like, well, what is the difference? And he told me a smart person learns from their mistakes but a wise person learns from the mistakes of others. I don't want to touch the stove to know it's hot. If I see you get burned, I'm good. <laughs> okay. You should have noticed one glaring item about all of these needs and that, uh, that all of them require some type of conversation. As I became transparent last time we were here, uh, especially in it, this area of communication, um, I told everybody that I was really bad, and I mean bad with conversation and communication. Yet with work, and I mean with a lot of work, if you've known, um, I'm better with it. And as a quick footnote, uh, I am better. Yes. But she would still probably say that I need work. Still needs work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we were giving you the emotional needs. Oh, uh, we're going to give you the emotional needs questionnaire, and Sharon's going to give it out. When you fill it, when you get it, do not fill it out here. This is a personal thing between you and your spouse. Let me say it again, not here, because it causes conversation and that conversation should be one-on-one. -on -one. Yet, if you are single, fill, out, uh, fill it out anyway, because you have found out what your emotional needs are. And also as a footnote, when, like I just said, when you fill out this conference, I mean, the, this questionnaire, a conversation will, and I mean will, happen. Um, and men, please don't be like me. Don't shy away from the conversation because this um, conversation can only strengthen your relationship. That's for both sides, wife and uh, men. But men, be very, very receptive. Too much time, y'all. We're, we're getting close. I got enough time. I'm good. <clears throat> All right. Yes, ma'am. Actually, they can go to. Thank you for um, asking that question. The question is for those that are watching online. If you would like a copy of the questionnaire, go to marriagebuilders.com marriagebuilders.com okay uh the that's if there's a few <clears throat> there's a few surveys on that website the one you want is the emotional needs okay, I, think I think it on is the on the title page, yeah. right okay the emotional needs questionnaire there for those is. watching online that's the one you want to access they have a a tab for it that says quizzes or questionnaires, and that's where you will find it. Let's talk about what oneness is. Can anyone tell me what oneness means? Anybody? Yes. I don't have a lot of time. Okay. <laughs> oneness is, is exactly what the word is, it's being <clears throat> as one. So communication is part of oneness in a marriage. Two people can possibly be, can two people possibly be one without communicating? I recently read uh, that a need for communication can be found in the Song of Solomon. This book is a love song about King Solomon and his wife. As it, it, the, the word that is expresses intimacy and oneness from a husband and a wife's point of view. <clears throat> I took this, um, these excerpts, and what it's coming from is um, from Solomon 1, the entire um, chapter, 1 through 17. When you read it, this, these are the bullet points you're going to get from it. It's that she communicates how much she loves him. She tells him that he is the most important thing to her. 
She tells him that she loves him because he respects her. She communicates her insecurities to him. She is insecure about her beauty. She is insecure about her financial status. She wants to know more about him. He communicates how much he loves her. He tells her more about himself. He opens up to her. He describes how beautiful she is to him. Because beauty is a subjective thing. She tells him, uh, he tells her how he will provide for her. And if you notice, this from the scripture alone, it was covered in the, those needs, just from that one, the 10 basic needs. Their communication leads to oneness. Would there have been, one, uh, would there have been oneness if, one, if they had been no communication? So. Um, I, I think what's really interesting to note here, the dynamic marriage program is a faith-based program. What's interesting is that Dr. Harley, it, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you. So what I was saying was, I think it's interesting to note here that the dynamic marriage program is a faith-based program. Dr. Harley, it never says in the book anywhere that he is a Christian. However, the things that are written in his book fall in line with what God's word says. And I would imagine that's why the Dynamic Marriage Institute selected the book. So when we started writing it, Rodney said, well, which scriptures are you basing this on? And I said, I didn't pull any scriptures. And as God would have it, although we had changed the subject, he had pulled these scriptures out of Solomon, the, the Song of Solomon, chapter one, that spoke directly to the 10 basic emotional needs. I thought that was really interesting. So we are going to stop here and take questions. We have about 10 minutes left. Are there any questions, comments? Everybody's good? <laughs> care, care to share? <laughs> yes, Reverend Winston. I'll ask if you encounter someone who's on the verge of divorce. They're they're together, but they're talking. Well, one person is is let you know they're contemplating mm -hmm. divorce. What would you say to them? Well, what I have said, because I've been in that, that position, I reference back to the three stages of marriage. First of all, I need to know what their faith is, what their belief in marriage is. So if we are of the same faith, then I share with them the three areas of marriage, intimacy, conflict, and withdrawal. You can work your way back to intimacy when you are in a place of withdrawal. It takes a lot of hard work. If both parties are willing to do that, you're going to go, you're in the space of withdrawal. You have to go back through conflict and ultimately you end up back at intimacy. Most people don't make it when they have to go back through conflict. So if they have a willing heart to save their marriage, they can absolutely get back there. So the first question would be, do you want to save your marriage? And if both parties want to save the marriage, then if they're willing to do the work, even if doing the work means working your way out of the marriage so you can part amicably. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions? We, we were certified through the dynamic marriage program, um, not as facilitators. And then we trained with our pastor and first lady, Sister Cecile, uh, when we expressed interest in wanting to take over the marriage ministry. So Rodney and I have a deep, deep passion for healthy marriages. Because like I said earlier, when we were speaking, there is an attack on families. Yes, that, there is. that is who the enemy is hitting right now. 
And when you have a solid foundation with the husband and the wife at the head, and when the enemy tries to come in through your children, and we're walking, talking testimonies to that, the enemy tried to come in through our children because he could not come in and divide us. He definitely we, we tried. Were a united mm -hmm. front. So <clears throat> when we were going through what we were going through um, with with our kids, I'm like, we can't be the only ones. But opening up and talking to people, they'll let you talk, but other people don't want to talk back. Right. So we just said, okay, if we open up and we're transparent and honest about some of the things that we've gone through and some of the challenges in our marriage when I was a young bride you know there there were things that I wasn't doing in terms of caring for my husband's heart the way he was caring for mine and had we continued on that path we would surely be divorced we would surely be divorced so I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know how he's going to use us in this ministry. We told pastor yes five years ago to the taking over the marriage ministry. And then the enemy came in and all hell broke loose. And people are like, well, what's going on with the marriage ministry? What's going on with the marriage ministry? We had a lot of hits. But God's been preparing us. Mm -hmm. He's been preparing us. So Those hits did nothing but make us stronger and have our bond even closer. So, but like I was saying earlier, you know, marriage is a constant. I don't care if you've been married five years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You have to continue putting in work, you know, if you want the excitement to stay alive in your marriage. If you don't want to become complacent. One of the things Rodney does for our anniversary every year is he introduces something new in our marriage every single year. And I'm like, how do you come up with this stuff? You know, where, where does this come from? But it gives me something to look forward to every year. Thanks, Deacon and Sister Smith, for that wonderful lesson. Next week, I invite you to join us. We'll be continuing in our series, Back to Basic. Next week will be entitled Renewal. All of us need to have our Christian life recharged. So I look forward to having you join us again next Wednesday on YouTube and Facebook. God bless you. God keep you. Look forward to seeing you again.